I don't know what the other one's titled. Bear Tutorials, Making a Bear Paint Capacitor. Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make a bear paint capacitor. So by the end of the tutorial, you're going to have a piece of paper painted on both sides with bear paint and it's going to be able to store a charge. Okay, so as I mentioned in the previous shot, uh, this is our capacitor. It's just a piece of paper painted with bear paint on both sides. But that's really important because it's not fundamentally different from this, which is probably the way that you think of a capacitor. This capacitor, just like ours, has two conductive materials separated by an insulating material. Here our insulating material is just a piece of paper. And when those are separate, there's a difference in charge between those uh, two materials, or rather we can create a difference in charge, and that's how we charge the capacitor. So now I'm going to show you what you need. So for this tutorial, we're going to need a bit of bare paint, some paper or something else that we can paint it on. Remember, it has to be insulating, so this could be paper or cardboard or wax paper. The thinner, the better and a bit of tape or something to control the shape. Paint your capacitor however you like. Just ensure that you have the same amount of paint on both sides of the piece of paper. Okay, so now we're gonna test our capacitors. A bit like the resistance tutorial, the amount of paint on the paper really makes a difference in the performance. So you'll notice that we've got one here that's got a lot of paint uh, and one that has almost none at all. Remembering that each one, the other side, has the same amount of paint. And also on the top, they don't touch each other. Because if they did touch each other, then the capacitor would short out and it wouldn't store a charge. So, now I've got my multimeter here, and all I have to do is set it to capacitance and touch each side of the capacitor. Of course, I've got to get it on the correct scale first. So here we've got 55 nanofarads, something like that. This one, which is slightly smaller, it's about 30. This one, which is smaller yet again, so about 16. So the point is that the less paint you use, the less capacitance it has. And if you notice, uh, capacitors are always rated with a capacitance. So now you can build a capacitor rated to a very uh, specific capacitance. So now that we understand a bit more about how our capacitor works and how to measure its size, we're going to try and charge it. And we're going to do that simply by connecting up a battery uh, to the capacitor. One side of the battery is going to go to one side of the capacitor, and you can see there it's connected like that. The other side of the battery is going to go to this side of the capacitor. Because our capacitor is homemade, it's not as efficient as, um, as an industrial one, so it'll take a few minutes to charge. Uh, we'll come back in a minute and we'll see if it's holding any voltage. So now we've let our capacitor charge up for a few minutes. We're going to test the voltage with the voltmeter. So we'll take the battery off. Remembering that the red wire is connected to the top here, we're just going to touch both sides of the capacitor. And we can see that it's now holding about 0.3 volts. Um, if we left it longer, it would charge up more. Uh, it would charge up to, eventually, theoretically, it would charge all the way up to the level of whatever the va battery voltage is. Um, so you can see that now, in this piece of paper, we're actually holding some electricity, which is really cool. So I hope that you were able to build a capacitor and that you got to store some charge. In further tutorials, we're going to take these capacitors and we're going to incorporate them with some other devices and hopefully make some in, uh, simple analog audio filters. So keep checking back for more tutorials at bearconductive.com forward slash tutorials.